Welcome to Nintendo Voice, your voice for everything Nintendo. This is episode 98, recorded on the 28th of June 2017. My name's Lewis Pugh, and joining me to talk Nintendo, we have Colin Crompton. Hello! Back. back yes! from my adventures. Yeah. Indeed. And what have you done with Harrison? He's on an adventure. We talked He's places. on an adventure. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's like a baton pass type job. Yeah, kind of. Fair. Yeah, yeah. We 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 we, uh, we tagged each other on the way out. So. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, I guess it'll be my turn next week. We shall see. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll save that to the week out afterwards. I'll take my break then. Um, <laughs> but we have lots to talk about today. Mm. We've had some cool news and. Everyone's aware. Uh, obviously, we've got the the Super Nintendo Mini. I was kind of I was kind of talking before the show. I'll be honest. As, as it's just us Brits on the show, uh, I'm going to make an exception today. Uh, now, after many years <laughs> of yeah. restraining myself from saying these yep. words, um, Nez and Snez, um, the Snez Mini has been announced. <laughs> I. I is SNES such a bad thing? It, it, Apparently so. I don't think it is. It's fine. But well, yeah, 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 I'm Brit, so we called it that when it was first announced anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the context. To be fair, if you don't know, um, from my understanding, from what I've found out, the internet is mostly an American audience, no matter what you're doing. Yep. And so if you're not aware, um, I'm not sure if it's purely a UK thing or it's a European thing. Um, but we called the Super Nintendo, uh, just shorthand, you know, SNES yes. and, and NES for the NES. Uh, for some reason, not entirely sure why, we didn't break up the, the acronym NES. We just said it as a word, NES. Yeah, uh, NES, yeah. And it, it's not just like a small pocket. There seemed to be how everybody did it over there. And... I've heard many variants, like the Super NES. I'm like, who calls it the Super NES? But I have heard that version. Oh really? It's like, like of the day though, or is that a more no, recent? Oh, that's more recent. Yeah. yeah, that's my my suspicion there. Yeah. We can talk more about how to pronounce Scott's names in the appropriate <laughs> news feature. Um, this week though, we've got what we've been playing. We do have that Nintendo news. We do have the bonus round, and that's going to be pretty much the show for this week. Uh, and so, let's jump straight into some what we've been playing, and Colin. Yeah. Sure, and you have been traveling. I have been, been out and about. You have. Have you been doing any gaming out and about or in between? I have been doing some gaming. Uh, so, for those who don't know, I travel to Scotland on a semi regular basis. It's like every like four months or so I have to go there. Uh, this time it's for christening. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I've, I've got loads of family up there and just happened to be a christening. I was like, yeah, I'll go up. I'll, I'll see everyone. Um, it's, it's like an 11 hour like coach journey it's like it's just like three hours from where i am to london that you change and have to go all the way up and round and everywhere um so 11 hours doing nothing you know it's pretty boring what was it weird enough, i think well i i took my 3ds with me ah. but i did I, I don't know if this is a phenomenon that you like, struggle with but I, I can't play any games that require like full attention while traveling i, I like to play stuff that's very light it's very simple so you can play while looking at the window basically oh that's nice okay back to the game um so i've only got two games that kind of fit that description everything mm. else is like heavy intense rpgs or monster hunter it's, um, a, it's not hunting condition no it's not ideal um no. So I took well one of the games was already I got downloaded and that's Pocket Card Jockey. Ooh, so that's a I've been playing a lot of Pocket Card Jockey and it's Excellent. in the game is still the, the quirks of that game still baffle me. Uh, but it's still fun as all heck. It's 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 very unusual but it works. As a game, it's real fun. Um, Come on, I, I'm I'm not sure I've confessed as such, um, but I played the demo, but I never did actually buy the game. Oh, it, it, it's, it's still worth me going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so. I, I yeah, definitely, definitely. 
it's a game that you play and then like two hours just go by and it's like okay. I, you don't feel like you've achieved anything <laughs> in that mm. time but it's like that was fun uh, it's a great time waster and, cool. yeah the, the other game i took is actually a, a ds game which i've had for years and i dug up um not literally because that'd be weird um you can start digging up ds games that'd be great but i uh puzzle quest for the ds oh fantastic time waster of a game because it's it's just a match free puzzle game on ds so is this the, the original puzzle this quest? the original puzzle quest yeah we never got puzzle quest 2 in europe i don't think Did we not? bizarre because it came out in north america and i've been tempted to import a copy but it's oh, within like one between one and two Oh, kind of... was it like Galactrix? Yeah, was that on the DS? Was it just console? It, it probably it? was, most likely. But probably, I, I, yeah, it probably was, because I think the DS probably was the bigger, the DS, one of the biggest. Well, it's, 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 it's interesting, because, I mean, these days, Puzzle Quest would be a free-to-play game on mobile. But, I mean, back in, like, 2000... I'm surprised it's not. I don't think that is a thing. I don't think it is. I think it's still a full-price game, even on, like, Steam now. Um mm. Yeah, I think it came out like 2007 originally, and back then there wasn't really any like there wasn't a mobile market as such. Uh, no. well, if there was, it was very early. So, um, yeah, so Puzzle Quest and uh, Pocket Card Jockey, great games if you're traveling. I, w- I do wish I had like Tetris or something, but I didn't. So, yeah. that's the thing. Um, uh, Fire Emblem, you got some. I do have Fire Emblem. I have Fire Emblem I like those sort of games are quite good for traveling. I, I I do find them a little bit too intensive, especially because I, 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 te- oh, I, I play firing with like the permadeath on, so oh, yes. it, it's yeah. like I don't want to be like just messing around with it. Oh, I've lost my character. <laughs> it's like because I wasn't paying attention. Um, yeah, I, I tend to find games. I play games that are like really forgiving, difficulty wise. You know, if you, if you, if you can't give the game your full attention, then that's what you want. You don't play a game where you. You know, you lose everything if you die. I think, oh. no, exactly. And like, even though, like, I, I see what you mean with like not wanting to like commit, as it were, to fire them or game yeah. like that, because there is like a, a kind of an overrunning like strategy you kind of need to be aware of. Mm-hmm. But I do like the idea of those like turn based uh, games where you can just like snap the knit at any moment, or even you don't even have to, you can just look away, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, yeah. But yes, I agree. You do then have to like kind of work out, all right, what's going on here? What's the battlefield looking what, like? What's the overall strategy that I'm going with? Yeah, because you gotta think like four moves ahead at all the time. It's like fucking yeah. that character there. That's what Advance Wars was even better. I feel. Yeah, I feel, yeah. I, feel, I I played it with a travel game with friends. Um, uh, in multiplayer, as it were. Oh well. This, this is going back a few years. I where think, I think the reason why the kids are in the back of a car. And we're yeah. passing back a Game Boy Advance playing like a, a custom map in Advance Wars. Many hours were just spent yeah. battling that way. Yeah, I think the reason why it works better as like a travel game is because there's no RPG element. There's no That's like right. thinking about well what character do I need to level up and what you know. Yeah. It's just more of a this it's, unit. It's also yeah. just a bit more lighthearted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean strategy, strategy, but I mean if you're a, a battle, you know however you want really but I mean in terms of the fact you can build up resources and such oh, like, oh I made a bad move here oh well um yeah. I'm sure mate will do the same soon enough <laughs> well, joking, it's, it's not like the same like um, small squatted permadeath type situation yeah it's thing, like yeah, I'm in trouble yeah. kind of thing yeah yeah so what did you spend the most of your time playing them uh honestly I mean puzzle quest Maybe because of the speed of the game is quite slow. I generally, because the battles do take a little while. Mm. And I wasn't really like trying to get through it as quickly as possible. But I managed to, because like, so I started a brand new game. Yeah, I've got like 75% of it done <laughs> by the time I, was, I reached my destination, nice. uh, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, I kind of flew through it. You know, the battles took like, I think like maybe 15 minutes at a time. Well, once your character starts getting more powerful, it, they become you, you can become overpowered in that game really quickly. So it's just like you make two moves and you win. It's like, all right, cool. Um, Pokemon Card Jockey, I um, I played I played quite a bit of it, but the issue I had with that was um, 
there's a lot of like little sections that have time limits, especially when you're playing the solitaire game itself. There's a time limit attached to it, so you can just be like, "Oh, I'm just going to stare at a window for a few minutes and then go back to the game." It's like play that game. Do the so that's where it's quite the opposite, where I imagine it's a lot more like hearted game, but it it definitely requires your attention at all times uh, while it's running. Yeah, well, if you want to win a race, you probably should do like a flawless run of solitaire games yeah. to actually win the race. But um, yeah, no, I had fun. I had fun with it. It's, yeah. So that was my travelling experience. Cool. That's the only thing I replayed while I was away. Cause the edge, uh, <laughs> but I had other games obviously downloaded my, to my 3DS, but when you're around family and stuff, it's like I don't have time to take the hours. And, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, just to let you know, I have asked the audience what are some of their favourite travel games. Oh. Um, so I might interject if I get some responses or yeah, if you heard cool. from this. Um, but the question I wanted to ask you then is, because you mentioned oh. about the games having, the ones you have downloaded on your 3DS. Mm-hmm. So what is currently like the split between like, Retail games, well, like the boxed games, they're like the games you've downloaded on the 3DS. Uh, as in the type of games? No, no, not like as in the amount. Oh, like, just, just the amount. Uh, you have like 50 de- downloaded games and 50 boxed games. Oh, huh? well, I've got quite a few of the games in the Hubble bundle. Yeah. Um, so if you take those out of the equation, because they really. I mean, they're, they're cheap. I don't really count those. Um, I guess in short, if you were go- going out and buying a new game, would you first look at physical or digital? Uh, generally speaking, physical copies where I go first. Absolutely, every time. Uh, it's generally cheaper. Yep. Um, almost definitely cheaper. Yeah, almost definitely. Um, yeah, uh, generally physical. I mean, on, I, let's see. Yeah, on the whole, I've got more physical games than I have downloaded games. But the, the games I've downloaded are generally the bigger games, which is kind of bizarre. Like that most, is quite bizarre. Like yeah. Most of the Generations is probably the biggest game I've got, and I downloaded that mm. instead of buying physical copies. Uh, uh, well, I can understand that exception. Is it just that you just haven't downloaded the Monster Hunter games because you want them with you at all times? I think that was the original intention. Yeah. I was like, yeah, because I, I thought, oh, yeah, I could play this ball out about. Mm. In practice, it doesn't quite work. Um, that's right. Like if you if you got something else occupying that card slot, yeah, you know, yeah, you've got yeah. good old reliable one hundred with you as well. That's that's why I like you. Need, you can download games. You don't have to keep changing. Like, you don't have to carry a bunch of you know cards yeah. with you. Um, yeah, I think I, at the time I just wanted one big game. You know, just, yeah, just downloaded, just in case I'm in a situation where I don't have a big game with me. I've yeah. always got one on the system. Um, but other games like you know Super Street Fighter 4 3D, like <laughs> very you know quick, it's a quick fire. Um, it's actually quite a good version of Street Fighter 4. It's really good actually. It's really smooth. <laughs> um, I mean the soggle pad's not the best for fighting, but yeah. it's. Good I, I, do, I do think that was the best launch title for the system. Not not Rayman 3D. <laughs> no, not Rayman 3D. Well, I never played Rayman 3D on the 3DS, but no, you see. No, I never right, technically, but I have played Brain Man 2, which is what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I should really get it and try it out. I do like Brain Man 2. But yeah, even though they're both ports, uh, Street Fighter yeah. 4 was a much more recent game. Well, I mean, it still is a more recent game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It goes in a linear fashion, even the games, but it wasn't that old. I don't know, I think by the time the, I was about, I think about a year old or so, by the time the 3DS version came around. Yeah, because I think it was literally like the Super Street Fighter 4 had just come out. And then well, it was like, okay. I'm not sure it even had yet. I think it was on the horizon still. Possibly. Yeah, maybe, maybe it had. <laughs> I, I, I think the 3DS version is the Super Street Fighter version. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Content. Might be. I don't uh, know. I'll double check that. But um, yeah. it sounds right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, that's about it for us, really. That's really it's, cool. yeah. That's cool. Well, I'll, I'll jump on. Um, on 3DS, and I guess it's the same Switch, really, for me, is I'm definitely more in the di- digital route. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, oddly, I mean, apart from a few exceptions, like ever since like New Super Mario Bros. 2 on the 3DS, yeah. like well, all my big games are digital. Um, and yes, most of the time they were more expensive. Um, thankfully, yeah. not much more when you're buying new, new. Um, 
But it's really quite cool just to flip open that system. And I've, all, I've got all these like full sets of folders and such. Uh, so you, you, I, don't, I haven't got any folders. I keep thinking, oh, yeah, the folder thing. Hmm. Never used to. Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, and to be fair, I mean, and it's really handy on the, I'm hoping like the Switch gets this eventually. Mm. It's like you can like zoom in and out on the 3DS icons. So That's you can right. load on one screen. Yep. And so I've got the little retail folder sort of thing. Wow. Like basically any big game I've bought since like New Super Mario Bros. 2 is there. So it's a great thing, like, just to go, what's what I want to play? And oddly, I spend a lot of time just looking at the menu because it, it then makes choosing what, like, especially if I've got short bursts to sync the players, like. You spend like 10 minutes at the time. Exactly. I, I do, you literally spend <laughs> like 10 minutes pondering oh. what would be the perfect thing to play at this moment and then have five minutes to play it. Yeah. <laughs> great yeah. Um But the, for the Switch, I mean, I've bought a few games now, but I still only oh. have that Zelda uh, car, um, which I quite like. Um, and in recent news, I should say, I had to archive my first first game on the Switch. Oh, um, Snake Pass, unfortunately, uh, was the unlucky game it which got, got archived from my system. And it recently got an update, so I might actually have to see what the update was. <laughs> That's an it, it. <laughs> it's quite a yeah. um, Update from the live chat, um, Jay says racing games for me uh, sorry this is on the travel quest travel games uh mm -hmm. racing games for me simple to pick up and play yeah definitely uh, arcade racers anything arcadey uh, you know like the bullet hell type shooter games anything like that it's great yeah definitely mm -hmm. ridge racing 3d would have been awesome yeah, yeah. i've got that too but just, you know, i didn't think about it yeah i can't remember what it would be but I, I have some sort of memories of playing some sort of racing game in the back of a car oh yeah not, not asphalt. Is that asphalt. Is there an asphalt game for 3DS? I'm, I'm sure there must be. No, there was there was a couple on the Engage. That's where the series originally started. Did you not know? Mm. You're going to bring all these interesting facts for me. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I do remember a more recent example of racing games. Um, I think I mentioned it on the show. I was playing, testing out the Switch on a train going to London, and we were playing. I was playing fast of a friend in split screen on it. Cool. The Joy Cons. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did it work okay? It worked brilliantly, honestly. Okay. Oh, okay. Very cool. Uh, I remember saying at the time, like, it was the perfect recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because we were moving at speed with, you know, the window yeah. was not open, but I mean, it was clear, like, you could see how. Uh, and obviously, fast is a very fast game. Yeah. Um, and just everything combined, like you know, the, the wrapping tray, whatever. <laughs> it, it, but it, of, it worked. It worked. We had a really great time playing. It reminds me of playing them. Um, did you ever play F Zero AX? Not AX, no. Like the actually in the arcade, they had to chair that. Like, yeah, problem. no, I've not physically seen AX. That apart from pictures. I mean, I, I never played it, but that would make me feel so ill. <laughs> just being like, you know, it's a sense of inertia and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah I couldn't cope with that. But anyway, yeah, uh, so I'm trying to think. So if, how well does like the controller work for fast on its own? Because it, it's obviously going to require a lot of joystick movement. Does it like dig into the hand after a while? Um, that's the thing, really, because I've not... I mean, I've played with the Joy-Cons quite a lot, but never in a, lot, a long session in itself. Okay. Um, so it's always been short burst sessions, and for yeah. that, it's always been fine for me. Uh, and so it's fairly simple controls. Um, it was like, you know, the stick to move around and you've got the L and R buttons. That's the more interesting point where if you don't have the grip bit, which yeah. extends your buttons, um, it is harder to press, but you kind of just get used to it, especially if you're just kind of with the mindset that like this is just so much better than like if we were, I was playing on my smartphone right now, sort of thing. It's oh, like yeah, yeah. a league difference. Yeah. Um, like, oh, I've actually got buttons opposed to all oh, these buttons are a bit more recessed than I would like them to be right now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's still it's still a really cool experience. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want that as my main controller. Yeah, I was going to say that's not like the ideal way to play it. But it, it's fine for like oh, you're both you're both playing on the same little controller sort of thing. Um, yeah. So, okay, so you did split screen on the Switch, correct? Yes. Well, yeah. How, cause that, that's got to be some, like, economic-sized, like, viewpoints you've got there. It, I don't think it's too bad, really, because of, like, 
right. how more modern games do you know the vertical split screen because we've got mm -hmm. wide you know wide screens now is yes. the actual size it gives you isn't too bad it's okay. um it's hard to describe really but I guess if you imagine your TV or something and you cut it in half, the two screens you're left with are still quite sizable. Yeah, uh, and it's kind of the same for the Switch. So it's kind of like it's a bit like a, a bit of a smaller smartphone screen at that point, opposed to a big smartphone. Yeah, because I'm looking at my gamepad right now and just try and imagine it like cut in half. As, yeah, it's but, it's economic, but it's well, exactly. But you want you want that Switch system near you. you yes. You're obviously not going to be placing it like at the end of a desk while you sit. <laughs> the other side of the, the couch. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you want it right next to you, or you know, in between you and your friend, mm -hmm. hunched over with the which is joy cons. Um, <laughs> That'd be a great yeah, add-on. Uh, you know, like third party, you love to do like crazy stuff. Mm. A switch screen magnifier. It's like this giant, oh, like thing, the, like the old Game Boy. Yeah, magnifiers. exactly. The thing you just strap onto the switch, and it's like it enlarges the. get it black and shiny. <sighs> Brilliant. Are we cool? good. Yeah. But I actually have been playing some arms. Oh, more recently. And the other thing, I mean, all you listeners can't see this, but what I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you on the screen currently. There you go. A good time to plug the YouTube channel. Mm. Um, some new joy cards I've got. Oh, it's the, the bright, oh, they're bright oh, yellow. Yellow ones. To be honest, they don't look good on screen. I, I yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. And I, I'm in a good testament here because I can, I can see it on the screen and in, and in person right now, and the colours do look very different. They do look green on screen, don't they? They do look somewhat green. They, they just, they just look These sick. are very, very yellow. Trust me, but you, yeah. And in person, I think they look quite cool attached to the switch. <laughs> we shall see. But yeah, if you want to check that, youtube.com forward slash Nintendo Boys. There we go. There you go. You get to see some sickly green, yellow Joy Cons. Indeed. Yes. Um, but yeah, I've been playing some arms. These are the arms Joy Cons, of course. Also, mm. the little buttons are yellow as well, or green, depending <laughs> how you're looking at these right now. And I, I have been playing arms with the motion controllers. Um, right. I, I've a few times um, kind of. Try to readjust the buttons, mm -hmm. uh, and the main realization of that was, oh, if I ever want to play this thing as a portable game or off off TV, I need to figure out the button controls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. motion isn't going to be very practical at that point. Um, but I've not quite got my head around it yet. Um, but yeah, it, it, in general, though, it's a very fun game, and I've been playing mostly like local multiplayer, or at least having a, a friend with me as we play through like. The various modes, whether they are whether it's the Grand Prix mode, mm -hmm. uh, you know, equivalent to the arcade mode, or going through the various online modes. Okay, cool. I think the first first thing I need to say about it is it gets like bonus points for being a very like co-op. I'm not sure co-op is not necessarily the right word, but a uh, a very local two-player friendly game. Uh, even right. even if it's not in modes where you're pitted against each other, because um, that's the odd thing. Because um, we were talking just today, actually, and we, we mentioned that although we've clocked quite a few hours into ARMS, we've yet to play a single game against each other. Right. It hasn't it's, come up. That's kind of surprising. It's like a, a secretly great co-op game. It is. Uh, and like, I think more so, like, I mean, the Grand Prix is really good for that as well, because like most arcade modes, um, I mean, there's exceptions out there like Smash Bros and such, uh, but mostly, you, you know, you're locked, you know, just one player... Um, and it's you know not, not always the most fun modes. It's a bit repetitive as such. Um, yeah. If you've got a friend with you, that makes that a lot more fun. Um, and interestingly, because you know it wouldn't be very fair if it was you know two people versus one. So there are two computers at you know at the same time as well, and that adds you know uh, just a different level of strategy. It's not necessarily easier or harder. Yeah, it's but just. I think it might be a little bit harder. Um, I was gonna say it must be more complicated because there's more. Yeah, it's a little bit of stuff happening on screen, so you gotta be like more. Yeah, both your team and the the computer's team can like essentially gang up on one person. E exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or you you can be caught up, you know off guard by you're focused on one computer cutting out, and the other one punches out of nowhere, and they they start punching you by the side, and you're, yeah. <laughs> you're like, hey, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that and the the online well. The main online mode, uh, the party mode, that's really quite cool with two local players because, in, you know, the same 
big lobby as everybody else does. And yeah. sometimes it will just pick, like, say, player one in a match with three, like three different other people, and then player two just, you know, is just watching. Uh, but sometimes it will pick both player one and player two, and they will be matched up against like players from two other systems, or it could be oh. two players from the same system, like a different system, of course. Um, and it's just it's it's really quite cool type lobby system. Um, very accommodating. Yeah, it, it sounds very that. convenient. It is very convenient, yeah. and and like uh, obviously the main reason why I talk about it like that is just because that's you know that's my play style because that that's how I've been playing the game, and so it works quite well for that. Cool. Just just clarifying for people listening. Going, oh, it's you know I, I'm not particularly interested in the carp and such, but hmm. on it. just because that's I mean, how I've been playing. Uh, the one thing I'm really curious about, so maybe you can answer the question, uh, is how is it as a strictly single player experience? See, that's the thing. I mean, I've not put much time in just a single player, uh, okay. but I mean, I know what the modes are, I know what the content mm -hmm. is. And so it really depends if, and I guess it also depends on your definition of single player. Are you including going online? Or just a, like an offline single player experience. Yeah, let's give you offline. It's just straight offline. If you're straight offline single player, it's gonna be very restrictive. Limited. Yeah, limited it's limited. Yeah, what you can yeah. do because you'll have access to obviously the Grand Prix. You can do that with the different characters. There is a you know a difficulty select from a, it's like one to s okay. Seventy or something. Uh, but yeah, you got, there's a difficulty range. Obviously, you can do it with different characters. You earn currency, which you can you know buy more arms. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're the the unlocks for each character. So every character can eventually get everybody else's arms. And if you do that again, you get powered up versions. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that just sounds so great when you play it on, on its own. Everybody can have everybody else's arms. <laughs> only, only if you put the time and the money in. Yep, yeah, that's right. The virtual money, thankfully. See, that was, that could have been such an easy way from be like microtransaction, but they didn't do it. A little loot so, box, get some arms. Exactly. Yeah. yeah badly. So badly you say it is basically the, like, the equivalent of like the original Splatoon. Is like the single player is quite limited, but that's the thing, though. But I mean, I, I feel that you know at least Splatoon had this campaign, but then again, mm -hmm. you could play. Anything else single player? Could you no, uh, you're, I think it's just strictly the single yeah. player campaign, so which is more or less like a yeah, because there's like, like a training move. And there's other things you could do. Like, I mean, you could set up a oh, I just want to play against the computer playing hoops or volleyball mm -hmm. or yeah. that target practice mode. And there's a few, like there's a few like training type mode things, mm -hmm. uh, but they all feel quite like side. Uh, yeah, affairs, distractions. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, but the real meat of this game is going to be in competition. Whether mm -hmm. this is competing, you know, with someone next to you, or competing against someone online, or like in a lobby type environment, or whether it's going against, uh, you know, chasing that leaderboard, or you know, increasing your rank. Yeah, um, that's where I think the real fun is going to be had. And it's can be hard to advise, like if you feel like you wouldn't get into that, uh, and you wouldn't play with anyone locally. It's a tr very tricky one to recommend. I mean, as it's as fun as the game is, yeah. I feel it's there's like a, a loop, a game loop or two that it's missing uh, to just kind of to really flesh out how much you're going to get out of this game. Mm. So um, what, what you're saying is this game doesn't have legs. No, it's, it's got arms. It's got arms. Huh. Um, it's got the arms, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the legs. I'm yeah. sure we were the first people to come out of that one. Yeah, of course. Maybe, maybe but, in the sequel, arms and legs. But I mean, I, I've, I mean, I've, I've heard the complaints that there's not much um, content and such. But between the the beta and what time I've got to play with arms so far, I've already put like 20 hours or so into it. Mm. And I'm going to be putting much more in. So at least per personally for me, um, it's definitely more worth the purchase. Okay. And I think it's going to be an interesting ride just to see how like, that ranking system goes. But I mean, I, I, Do you think ARMS has had a, as much impact 
as like the what the original Splatoon has on you. I know you love the original Splatoon. I do not just did do love Splatoon. Um not past tense. It's uh. it's not had the same impact, but it's not that far off to be completely honest. Okay. Yeah. It it's got that same sort of like originality vibe. Yeah, that and that's you know that's special. I mean, it, it is a different type of game as well. To be fair, yeah. oh, definitely. But it, it was also kind of scratches a different itch that mm-hmm. Splatoon does. So I'm very glad it's here. And one thing which is definitely worth mentioning, like first we've had the first new character being announced, mm-hmm. which is basically the boss at the end of the Grand Prix is going to be playable next month. Yeah. But in, in addition to that, they've already dropped the first update to the game. Not announced, but it's dropped. Yeah. And it adds some new things to it. Okay, so I'm worried about bug fixes and stuff like that. But... Yeah, no, it's not just bug fixes. Like, it's just like there's a couple of little things, really. But one of the things is oddly like something that I kind of wanted to happen. I was just so surprised it came around like within a week or so of its release. Um, and it's it's kind of an expansion to how the, at least mine's saying, I'm not jumped into it yet, is how the, the ranking mode works, which currently, or how it used to be just the one versus one online mm-hmm. but what they've done is they've expanded it so you can have like two versus two or at least actually no i think what it is sorry is that you can have a lobby of four people and, and then you can have like rotations of one v one and i think the advantage of that is so you could like i've been playing with a local friend is mm-hmm. so then you could be taking turns of like ranked f- fights and such or at least just one versus one fights online that's because on the the party mode, you don't really get to choose what you're going to do. So you could be playing right, volleyball. Yeah, yeah. You could be playing, you know, a, a free for all. It could be a one on one. But uh, this is a mode. All right, if you want to do some one on one locally. Ooh, there you go. Uh, but but against other people, like there's now a mode for it. Cool. But they've also introduced like a spectator mode, and I'm uh, surprised that wasn't in there from the beginning. Well, true, but I mean, it, it, it's still pretty close. Like I'm I'm glad it's yeah. yeah, yeah. I could just be, oh, this is just, oh, they, they forgot some bits. It's it's just fine. <laughs> or it, 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 it was just sitting there like, oh, yeah, Spectre. It could be for that in. like these little updates, like once yeah. a month or something. See, this, this, that might be what gives the arms its legs, yes. so to speak, is these, you know, these like incremental. It, it, it still feels like they just like brush arms out about, you know, be yeah. like, about the bits it needs, but, yeah, but it, at it least it's coming. I, I mean, this is definitely my top of the cup of tea. This game, but mm. I do kind of feel for the wider audience. It is missing this more elaborate single player mode. Yes, ba- yeah. Basically, it needs some sort of story mode. Um, and yeah, because that's that's what I keep hearing. That's what yeah. I keep getting asked all the time. It's like, does Arms have a single player component? I'm like, it does. But it's not as much as the out. Street Fighter did. You know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more than that. But I mean, it's it's more similar to that uh, mm. than, like, say, um, Injustice Two or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. But yeah, it needs something like uh, people are really, uh, you know, attached already to these characters. Mm-hmm. Even people who haven't even played uh, the game yet. That was and, like, the one part I wasn't concerned with. I was like, I know these characters are going to be well fleshed out, well developed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Nintendo. It's what they do best. I understand, but I feel they want a bit more, like in terms of like, like backstory or just seeing interactions, because they can see they're like interesting looking characters, but they don't want them to be mm. limited to purely how they are in the arena. Yeah, because they allude yeah. to like their personality outside, but don't commit to anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of like F Zero <laughs> in that respect. Yeah. yeah. So. Very true. And I'll interject, interject now from our earlier question Ooh. about favorite or best travel games. Um, have to, you know, have to agree with this one. Gorney here. Uh, Tetris is yes. the best travel game. Tetris. Yeah, the game I should have took, but completely blanked my mind. Until I was on the coach, I was like, yeah, oh, I could replay Tetris right now. Sure I was trying to remember if I do have a version of Tetris on the 3DS, but I've got the Game Boy version of Tetris on the 3DS. Mm. So, yeah, I'm not sure what's... Was there an actual 3DS version of Tetris? There must have been. I know there was a DS. You could play Tetris on a toaster. I'm pretty sure. You know. No, no, I'm saying oh, no, I've got the Game Boy version on the 3DS. So it, te- it runs Tetris, but was there a 3DS Tetris? Yeah. 
Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> cool. I was going to say yes. And... Anyone in the chat knows, lets me know. Was there a proper 3DS Tetris? Um, so yeah, it's mostly been arms for me. A little bit of Zelda, but oh. that, that's kind of reckon. Um, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be holding off on Zelda until the update, which ah, is this cool. Friday. So. Oh, very true. Mm. Um, I, I, I hit a landmark where I've got 100 shrines now. Oh, only 20 to go. 20 to go. Have you encountered any, any bad ones yet? Any bad ones? Like are these, like sort of bad motion ones? Or? Well, I think they're in a special category, the motion ones. So they're yeah. really bad. Um, All the ones I've got to go are definitely um, shrine quests. Right. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not they're sure. really cool. I really like those. They're like it's, they're, it's usually something like quirky. It's like you know. The, but I know there's one more trickier to find. Yeah. Yeah. My path full of them was just trying to find the most least densely populated area of shrine areas. icons and wander yeah, around. Like that. That's how I ended up, that's how I ended up finding the last three shrines. I think I was like, okay, mm. there's a huge gap in the map here where there's not a shrine. <laughs> there must be one there. Something. Exactly. <laughs> he spent like two days running around in circles. They're like, oh no, there's actually nothing here. So yeah, yeah. there is one shrine to be forever defined. Hmm? One or is it just a wandery round one? No, it's a, it's a random one, but it's where it's located. You would not expect it because it's. I don't know, this might be a slight spoiler, but it's technically inside a dungeon. And so you're like, oh. okay, yeah. Um, well, I must have it, surely. It doesn't ring a bell, but I mean, I, I, I've got like the exact number of shrine quests as I need. Like, I've got 20 remaining now. Oh, yeah, you must, you must have it already. It's, so it's, it's, it's inside the, the castle. Oh, the castle. Sorry, yeah. I was thinking of a beast. No, 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 no. Once well, you've done the beast, yeah, you can't that, do that. that one was one of the, the later ones I did get. Mm. Like that castle one. That was the last Which one. Is the, the, the amount of times I've seen the credits in this game now. Mm-hmm. Quite a lot, I would say. <laughs> I'm not sure it's quite double digits, uh, but uh, it's uh, quite a lot. Go through the game that many times? I've finished it like maybe three times. Well, I, I mean, like, in terms of, you know, stor- storming the castle and beating Ganon. Oh, right. Not yeah. Anything else. yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I've uh, been in like three times. I mean, it's a cool fire boss. It's not... I mean, I think the first half it's really good. I think the second part of the boss fight's a bit... It's just, look how great and epic we can make it, but it's actually really easy. That's um, like, yeah, that's fine. Just, just so good, you know. <laughs> it's, also, it's basically a, a huge cinematic. I still think they could have done more with that second part of the boss battle because you're stuck yeah. in Hyrule Field. If, if you can, like... Nah, agreed. You know, if he's like, yeah, I like, I like the idea of it. Um, but yes, you could execute on that more. So yeah, like if you chase like like through mountains and stuff, that would be really cool. But yeah, maybe next time. Should we, should we move on to some Nintendo news? Let's do some news because there has been we a got, lot of news. Got some juicy news, yeah. We've got some real uh, juicy bits of news. Should we? Should we start with the big piece of news? Or we I, end with the yeah. news? No, I'm happy to start the bit. Let's get the start. big bit out of the way. That's cool. Okay. Well, as we announced previously. Super Nintendo Mini, the SNES, SNES Mini, the SNES Mini. Yep. Has been announced. Um, it's actually only called the Mini in Europe, isn't it? And it's just the. I thought over here, is it called the Classic? Super Nintendo Classic? It sounds like it's the Classic here and the Mini in America. How oh, strange. Where, where do they call it in your region? <laughs> <laughs> this is dear. It's 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 coming out. Um, it's it's coming out with twenty one games, yeah. um, including unreleased Star Fox two. That's crazy. It's I mean, crazy. It's crazy that they're like, okay, we're going to acknowledge it. It could have released it on Virtual Console at any time. At any time, people would have been mad and go, oh, it's, it's just, it would have sold loads. Yeah, but they're like, no, we're going to save it for this very very uh, niche item we're going to release. Um, and the yeah, the other important detail of all of this is it comes out on the 29th of September. Yes. In America and Europe. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so. also 30th of September for Australia and New Zealand and the 5th of October for Japan. Yay. There we go. Uh, I do like the look of the, uh, the Super Famicom that they're getting. It's like, that's pretty cool. Is um, that not the same as what we're getting? <laughs> is that not the same? I don't think it's the same as our system though, is it? Oh, I, that's my mate. I thought our, our system was pretty much identical to the Super Famicom. Obviously, the American 
Super Nintendo, which was the other one. I know one. Yeah, the Americans are completely different because it's got the purple, like, slightly... Yeah. There might be a slight difference, but I'm pretty sure uh, the European one and the Japanese one... I thought, like... that, I thought each system had differences so you could import games. That was, like, their way of getting around. Oh, it. yeah, the, the actual cartridge slot might be different, but I mean, yeah, like, yeah. what the actual console looks like. Hmm. Um, but yeah, the, I the American version. Really shit, then, for the Americans. Well, that's, uh, that's an odd choice. It is. Um, I'm not sure how true or not it is. I, I read something recently. I, I apologise. I can't remember who the quote was. It was someone who was working at Nintendo of the time. Right. And they were saying that the reason why they, they changed it to the more boxier look for America, yeah. how it's stacked. And, and probably not for the reason you're thinking of either, but because they had like an expansion port at the bottom. Right. They were, they were apparently... Like forward thinking and going, all right. If we have something going on the knee, it needs to kind of be able to be stackable. Did anything come out? Um, for I'm, I'm sure there were more reasons going behind it. Did Did anything come out for Super Nintendo? That actually used it though. Um, no, because the the um the, Nintendo the PlayStation, PlayStation never, never actually happened. Door. Well, it, it happened. They found the prototype version, but yeah, it never actually. Uh, but that, the strange market. thing is that the prototype wasn't an expansion at all. It no. was a standalone console. It, it, it was a standalone console, so that's weird. But yeah, that's I, I think I think that there's obviously much more different reasons there because it, it's more. It, it's kind of a bit of a more mature looking system, really. It's a bit more boring as well, in my opinion. <laughs> it gets rid of the bright, like kiddy colours, you know, as it were. Replaces them with you know the purple. Uh, I was just like, it looks a bit more boring. I was like, compared to what came before it. No, no, compared to like the, the Japanese or the European version. Right. Of it. Okay. okay. I don't know. You, the Super Nintendo looks amazing compared to <laughs> the original NES. Yeah. You know, you, you start the American one up against the Japanese one. You know, mm. the Japanese one does look more. I just say generally appealing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You, could, you could also make the like downside argument where you could say, "Oh, that looks more of like a kid's system compared to like the competitor of the market." Mm -hmm. So that could have been the angle as well. Maybe, yeah. Um, but yeah, more important details. Though. So we've got <laughs> twenty-one games. It's an interesting number. Yeah, and so yeah. we we should probably spend a little bit more time on Star Fox Two. You know, okay, uh, let's, let's, let's discuss Star Fox Two. Yeah. Interesting choice uh, to put this out now. So, is Star Fox Two is the game that they finished way back when the uh, I think the N sixty four was about to launch, and that's the reason why they didn't release it. It just they didn't want it. They, they yes. thought it, like we might cannibalize the sales of the N sixty four or something like that. But yeah, basically, yeah, they wanted to draw a line. Uh, between 2D system and 3D system, mm -hmm. yep. because that was what they were marketing the N64 at. Which is interesting, because these days, I don't think they care that much. <laughs> if it was Nintendo today, it'd be like, yeah, just throw it out there. Um, yeah, the 3Ds. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's... I mean, I'm, I'm excited to be able to play it. And it's you know, about having to like, go through ROMs and emulate it, which I've never done, but I heard it's possible. I've never gone through and tried. Yeah, it. no, I've never done that. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it because like, the things I've heard about and the, the briefings I've seen, it mm. looks really cool. Yeah, but I, I like how there's like this. Um, this is mystique about it. Well, yeah, not, not <laughs> yeah. just the mystique, but like the few details I heard, like you know the the map, the map uh, system where you, you know you jump between your stages on. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there is like a time system to that. Okay. Like and like and like ships will move across. Yes. Like, as you're doing levels and other things, like you need this is some sort of level of high level strategy there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how much of that is. Yeah. You know, being exaggerated over the years or not. Um, but like you got the walker as well, and you got um, you got some extra. You got two characters as well, which have never appeared anywhere else. I don't believe. Oh, well, I think one of them was one of them like. Oh, probably that DS game. Come with it. Ooh, no, I was thinking of like, was it didn't like one of the cats appear in the uh, Star Fox like comic strip or something like that? Comic strip. Yeah, inside of the Nintendo Power has like a Star Fox do like probably. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I, know, I know in Command though, Star Fox Command for the DS, they, they took a lot of elements from Star Fox Two. Yeah. So 
That's interesting. Mm. Um, it's going yeah, to be my, hard. My main fear, though, if it's Star Fox 2, is is it going to run even slower than Star yeah, Fox That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he's like, pushing even further than what the Super Nintendo can do. Um, I believe it's using the Super FX2 chip. I think that was the plan. We're never going to make it. Um, mm. Even then, it's like Star Fox 1 ran at like uh, four frames a second. Uh, <laughs> what's this one going to run at? See, you thinking about it, that's the interesting thing. With Star Fox 2 never being re- officially released, yeah. can they just kind of make it... They cheat it like, a bit? Can I, yeah, can I just cheat it? Can I not... I mean, because it's going to be... I mean, the thing that's really running like... the, you know, yeah. this Super Nintendo Classic mm-hmm. is obviously much more powerful than the Super Nintendo. Yes. Yeah. So can it not just take advantage of the extra power? And it's it's not really... Maybe they maybe make a compromise. That will use a little bit of it, but not enough to, you know, so they tip their hat that they're doing so. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah, yeah, it's running slightly faster than it should be. Probably, yeah, I can see them doing that. Because, I mean, people still hold Star Fox or Star Wing, as it was known over here. <sighs> yes. Which is terrible. Um... They were, like, they were like, oh, it's such a good game. It's like, yeah, we've gone back and played it. it. It's slow as you like. And nothing is, everything's just a polygon, nothing's defined. Yeah. I mean, for its time. It does have a strange charm to it still, though. Oh, yeah. It's very abstract. Very mm. abstract. It's like, you just see weird shapes coming at you. <laughs> like, well, okay. Avoid the shapes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I guess, guess beyond Star Fox 2. What do we think of the lineup? And I guess we'll go through some of the highlights. I am. Um, so we got Super Mario World, Mario Kart, um, Zelda Link to the Past, F Zero, Super Metroid, Street Fighter Two, uh, Punch yeah. Out, Castlevania Three, I think, uh, Donkey Kong Country. Uh, if you got it should be Castlevania Four. Is it? I'm going yeah. for our, like little thumbnails here. I might have Cast- Castlevania Three was on the NES. Ah, okay, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mega Man X, Kirby Superstar, Final Fantasy yes. 3 slash 6, yeah. uh, Kirby's Dream Course, <laughs> Star Fox, Yoshi's Island, uh, Mario RPG, yeah. uh, Secret of Mana, Earthbound, and... Oh, gosh, you see the last game? Oh, Super Ghouls and Goblins. Yes. Ghouls and Ghosts. Super Ghosts and Goblins. Go- 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 yeah, Ghosts and Ghosts. Let's go see Ghosts and Ghosts. Yeah. Yeah, it's super ghouls and ghosts. Yes, Catcom and their weird naming traditions. Is that all the games? That's cool. all of them with Star Fox Two making it twenty one. The round number. Yeah, I really. I still think twenty one is an odd number considering the NES classic had thirty games. I thought they would have gone thirty again. Mm. Just like, but these are all very strong games. Though, I feel that, that is an extremely strong lineup. I think that's like. The, the average here is much higher quality than the average in. Yeah, I mean, all these games have at, at some point been in someone's top twenty, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, they're good games. Um, I mean, there's a few that I would have liked to see. Um, although now I'm blanking on them. I mean, everyone, I know everyone could play about Chrono Trigger not being there. Now, for Europe, I can see the reason why it's not there, because we didn't get Crunchy. We didn't get Crunchy until the DS we, version, I believe. We, we also didn't get Final Fantasy III, I don't believe. That's right, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. We got, we got, yeah. It's called 6 for us, but we didn't get it until the PlayStation 1, I think, re release, and the game, the game on Game Boy Advance after. Um, but yeah, no, as a lineup, I mean, they've hit all the key ones, all the big ones you want there. You mentioned F0. F zero zero, right? Yeah, F zero zero. That's the other thing. Um, didn't actually mention, but this does come with two controllers. Yes. Um, unlike the NES Classic, which had support for two but came with one, hmm. uh, and so there is a good selection of two player games here. Thankfully, to take advantage of that. Yeah. I mean, you have Super Mario Kart. Yeah, we got Mario Kart has great two player. Um, yep. Yeah, um, actually, F zero isn't multiplayer, is it? That's single player only. Is it? I believe so. But you've got Kirby Superstar, um, Street Fighter 2. Secret um, of Mana is two player. Oh, oh it yeah. is, yeah. 
it's te- technically up to three, but um, yeah, I don't give it, the, it that way. Is it the Super Two have a multi tap? I believe it did. Um, it, it did. Uh, I don't know if there's a, yeah, classic, a classic version coming. <laughs> classic, but kind of. Well, I guess more importantly, is, is there a Wii controller multi tap? Does such a thing exist? Because if so, that might work. I don't, I don't know, know why. why. Controls are wireless. But, um, but, if, but if, if someone makes one, I, I've got a suspicion it would work. Yeah, maybe. I don't put anything in there to block it. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, Kirby's Dream Course. Mm. I, I'm very pleased to hear that. That's... See, uh, this might be perfect for me because I've never played a Kirby game. And this apparently has what everyone's saying is like two of the best ones. Yeah, I would agree there. Super so, Star uh, and Dream I'm, Course. I'm like, ooh, that might be uh, my entry point into, into the Kirby series. Yeah. Um, no, very solid lineup. Very solid. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I think it's probably the weakest game. It's probably like Contra 3, maybe. I might swap that for something else. But... True, but also a, also another good example of a good two player. Exactly, game. yeah. Maybe that's why I added it. <laughs> it's a fantastic co op game. Uh, I probably would have swapped that for like more combat or something. Like more combat too. Um, but yeah, that's it's, it's good. Yeah, I'm also quite surprised that Capcom support this with Street Fighter 2. Yeah, considering. No, knowing that they're currently selling Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Most, you know, basically the same the game. Same but game. Pretty aversion. They don't want to tell you that, yeah. But for, you know, a little bit less than the price of this full system and all these games. Yep. I mean, I know <laughs> some people kind of like disappointed that these games aren't just available to download on the Switch. Yes, you know? that's the other thing. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, I'm sure they might come, become available later on. Um, well, that would be the hope. Yeah. Whether it's sooner or later that hopefully one day these games will be available on the Switch. But, well, for me, the biggest hope is Nintendo makes enough <laughs> SNES classics. Yeah. For everybody to be able to get one. You know, if you want one, you can go and get one. Because with the NES classic, that was not a choice. It, yeah. They made very limited. I think they told us ahead of time. Like, this is a limited item. Yeah. Just make sure you get it. Well, they, they've done as much this time in the sense that they've said it's limited in the sense that it's been sold like, as a seasonal item. Like, it'll be on sale for this year, yep. is what they've committed to. Um, but they've also committed to there will be more stock, yep. uh, there will be better supplied and so on, but it will be a this year item. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something they're planning to keep in their catalogue for yep. the years ahead. So get it while you can, folks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's a really good price as well. For I mean, for us, it's uh, sixty nine ninety nine, I believe, which is that's for for you know, for twenty one games, two controllers. Yeah, all in one box. The, oh, we yeah. admittedly, if we if you don't have a a micro, I think I'm not sure it's a mic. I think it's a micro USB cable. I imagine um, it would be. Yeah, um, you have to go out and buy one of those. It does not come with a cable to power it itself. <sighs> Which is weird, but yeah, okay. Um, but yeah. The, the wire is common enough. I mean, they're very common. I've yeah. got like maybe a couple of thousand lying around somewhere. Um, <laughs> the way you were looking. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's all. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's cool that they're doing this. I think the timing is a little odd. Um, In terms of the announcement or when it's coming out? When it's coming out, because, well, the NES Classic originally was like, the two had nothing coming out for the Christian period, so that was to cover it essentially. Um, yeah. Whereas this is, I'm, I'm guessing that they have plenty because the Switch is, you know, got a full lineup this year. So it was like, well, we'll just throw it out whenever, really. Well, we think we've made enough, we'll just chuck it out there and see, you know, see what happens. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it makes a quite a good range of product, really. So from the and I, I said I was allowed to say this, so I keep trying to refrain. So from the, the <laughs> SNES Classic, the SNES Mini, uh, you know, to the 2DS, to 3DS, and the Switch, you know, it's quite a nice portfolio they've got there, you know, covering lots of different price brackets and uh, potential markets and such. But yeah, I mean, assuming they can keep the s- supply going, yeah. it's going to be such a great, you know, Christmas oh, present oh, definitely. for the family, I mean, for friends. The, the SNES Classic is going to hit a much wider like demographic than the Switch or the 3DS wheel. And I, I would argue even more so than the, the NES Classic as well. 
It, yeah. it could just be the age group I'm personally in, but I no, feel... I think you're right. No, definitely. I think you're right. It, this, this Super Nintendo strikes a better balance between being a retro game mm -hmm. um, or a retro system and being something which is just more accessible and pick up and play friendly with just the average yeah. person nowadays. That's right. Definitely. I mean, well, I think because it, uh, it's just with the NES, I mean, I, I know, but I, I did play the original Nintendo, but I don't have many like, memories of it compared to the Super Nintendo. I played a lot of. So already I'm more sold on the Super Nintendo. I think that's the same for a lot of people. Plus, the, I think the original NES is just people just consider it old. You know, it's, it's the generation we're in now where it's just that was way yeah. before my time. So. That's right. I mean, but that, that can work both ways as well. I and mean, it's kind of hard to pinpoint where so old it's uncool or it's so old it's, <laughs> it's too, too, too retro. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so we got a bit of feedback from the live uh, watch about who's picking up uh, uh, Super Nintendo Mini. And so we've got. Um, Nelly Heller, not me. Can't even pre-order it here yet. Um, Jay Yaz. That's what uh, it is, yeah. That and a Super Famicom. Oh. I, am I the only one with connection? That, that's, it, that's double dipping right there. Um, yeah, I think that's weird because I've heard people in the States can't pre-order it yet. And yet in Europe, pre-orders are sold out. Yes. Uh, so, on Amazon, at least. so your question I've got for you first, Colin. Mm-hmm. What's your interest level like? Uh, extremely high. Extremely Have you pre-ordered yet? No, and that's the worry. Okay. That's the concern I've got. Have I already missed my chance? Because I went onto the U to the UK store, yeah, and it's like it's there. And it's at sixty nine ninety nine. It's, it's just, only one one per customer sold out. Oh. And this this was like I mean I saw the tweet and it was like, it was like three minutes after the tweet went up, and I went yeah. there and it's got oh wow. So you you're on the ball then. Like, I, within I saw five it. minutes of them announcing it, you were there. I saw and the tweet, was... and it was like, available for reorder. I was like, right, I'm there. And yeah. it, it's already... By the time I got there, it got over. Yeah. Well, I guess I was quite lucky. I mean, I, I, I managed to get up a pre-order from Amazon. But I, I think UK Amazon, at least, at least I think it was the, for the full, first day or something. Mm -hmm. or was it just the first half day? Obviously, they were just accepting you know, pre-orders. Yes. It wasn't like, oh, they ran out within 30 minutes or anything. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, even uh, Amazon UK now have kind of stopped taking in pre-orders, which says a lot because for them, for them it's usually... they usually just take them in until yeah. the thing comes out, and they and they, they, they just like they send you messages saying, "Oh, sorry, we can't fulfill your pre-order." So yeah, I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, but now I'm looking forward to it. It's cool. I mean, because although the the NES Classic was a cool item. I was never that upset. I wasn't able to get one. I like mm. I never tried too hard, um, but, and probably because you know I've got a load of those games on Virtual Console. Too. Yeah, I do have a fair few of these uh, Super Nintendo games on the Virtual Console as well. Um, I think there's enough that I don't have a Virtual Console, but it's also it would be nice because, uh, and it's a weird compliment to give, but I mean. Because of the state of virtual console, they're all kind of divided in different little silos. Like yes. Some in, some in Wii mode, some in Wii U mode, some on the 3DS. Yep. <laughs> um, but it'd be cool to have just the box it's like, plugged up to the TV. That's why I should Nintendo box. Or yeah. even something I could like take around to someone else's. Or, uh, we're just taking this little Super Nintendo with us. I wonder if Nintendo has been like extra cautious about hacking this time around. Because the NES Classic got hacked pretty quickly. And people yeah. were like, there you go, you have all games on it. Yeah. So, mm. I wonder if it's been like, okay, well, this time around, we're going to be more careful yeah. about that. I, I'm sure, well, I mean, we know at least it, it gets its power through a USB cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it actually ha needs to have any data being able to go through that port. Right, yeah. We shall see, though. I mean, uh, yeah, it'll get done. I'd, I'd be surprised if the thing doesn't get cracked open quite quickly. Yeah, but... a couple, give it a couple of days, and they'd be like, "Oh, by the way, this is how you get all the games on it." Yeah, but, but it, it's a strange thing, really, because assuming Nintendo kind of continues this trend, it doesn't really hurt their business model of this. No, not if really. people crack them open, because yeah. it's not like at least yet they've gone and tried to sell us a different a additional classic with different games, right? Uh, and actually, I could be wrong. Did people crack 
get like Super Nintendo games running on an NES Classic? I mean, kind of cross it. I don't think they got Super Nintendo games running on it. No. I know it, it got cracked really quickly though. Yeah, like you can just pour the entire NES library on it now. Pretty much. <laughs> with all, all the lovely art and description. Yep. And, they, and yeah. the NES Classic is just like, oh, great, more games. I'll read these, no problem. <laughs> like, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's jump over to some other news. We do have a bit of other news this week. Yeah, it's a bit of variety. It's a little bit of variety. So, Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, a little bit of news coming out. And we've learned that there's going to be a hardcore mode. Yes. Um, and I was reading this through, an uh, interview with the developers. Yep. And I think the language is a little bit loose on this. Sorry, um, it's not it's clear. Mixed between like how difficult you work in like a mainline Fire Emblem mm-hmm. game. Because um, it kind of alludes to like the prima death stuff, and that's what's asked next yep. in this interview. Um, and so it seems to be something which kind of leans more towards that, but isn't that? that? Yeah. Nah. Um, it, it could just be them being very fluffy of their wording, and it is, you know, it's just a more Definitely. difficult mode. So you need to be, you know. I, I, I kind of know how they're going to do it. I've got, I got a feeling I know how they're going to do it. Ah, then do that. Well, generally speaking, in most warrior games, if you get killed during battle, like you failed a mission, you keep everything you've collected. Okay. I got a feeling the, the way they're going to do a fire is you don't. You lose everything. You have to go back and you start again from scratch. You know, do the mission again. Um, that's how I. Because you can't really have permadeath because that doesn't make sense in a no. warrior's game because it's all fighting I'm- anyway. Unless it's like, I mean, in a weird way, I mean, it could because I assume like this is a difficulty mode purely for like, say, the story mode or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and because you have a, they were boosting before, like, oh, it's the largest amount of characters they've had. Yeah. At launch yeah. of a spin-off game, so maybe like you wh- you can whittle them down. Um, actually, that could work quite well. Um, but it doesn't actually sound like that's what they're doing. So yeah. let's ignore that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what else we got? Um, they also mentioned uh, that, and this I thought was quite bizarre. Um, so was this definitely from the developers of Warriors and not the current developers of Fire Emblem? I'm not sure because it. You mean the <laughs> about the Famicom Wars? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Had, you know, given the intent of you know they would like to make Famicom Wars a remake for it. Um, yeah, whoever's involved, whoever wants to take that project on, I'm guessing Intelligent Systems is the ones that are like, Yeah, we'll do this because I mean, you know, but um, we, we've heard similar comments in the past that they you know they, we they have would, heard very they would like to do such a thing. Um, you know what? Just... I would be too surprised if it's in the works. I oh, really, really? I would be too surprised. I don't, want to get you, the, I don't want to get you too excited right now. You know, too hyped for that's it. That's the not, because, I mean, the more, like, I, I really want that, but the more I think about it, the more time <laughs> goes on, and the more Fire Emblem sells, yeah. I feel that... Hey. Not, why? Why make advance all this now? <laughs> Metroid made a comeback, I'm pretty sure. I've True, awesome. but, I mean, like, Metroid's fairly unique for them. I mean, it's got overlap with all their other series, but, I mean... Like the overlap between Advance Wars and Fire Emblem is pretty damn close, you know. It is. And the only difference is really the setting um, and the RPG elements of the uh, the former. But um, true. I mean, from from an, like a casual observer, they look like the same game, same but game. one's fantasy and one's you know modern modern warfare kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously, I'd, I'd love them to make a new Advance Wars. Mm. Switch Wars. I want to end on a more happy yeah. note. Days of Ruin was just depressing. <laughs> Yeah, so. I think the, one one of the few things good about it is it introduced motorbikes, which was a cool unit. It's a really cool unit, but <laughs> I'm not sure. It's... I would have liked I would have liked to see the motorbike in the, the colourful and cheerful setting. Mm. Yeah, that the weird, dreary, purple, purple, brown colour palette <laughs> that one I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, next up. Uh, we've got some comments on Reggie Fees Mate on 4K. Uh, mm. And this one's probably what you would expect. Um, but Nintendo don't have any 
focus of 4K currently, reasonings being that the audience is too limited. Yeah. Um, I, I, basically, there's not there's not enough 4K screens out there. That that, that, that kind of quote just takes me back to like the Wii days when talking about HD and how they're like slow. But this through. is this is more believable. I feel. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 4K is super niche. It really is. I mean, I don't know anyone who has a 4K TV. No, that's true. Nor do I. So I mean, it's. You know, Microsoft's pushing real hard for it, so it's Sony, but yeah, it seems to be that they aim for a market that doesn't seem to exist right now. But it may exist. Yeah, and like, I was going to say, I mean, especially for Nintendo as well, because like a good like 1080 Nintendo game um, with like, you know, that particular art style to make that, you know, really pop. Yep. I'm not sure how much better that would look in 4K. Okay, no. Because I think 4K is really about the details, and it's not what Nintendo's really into. Yeah. Like even when they are like you know they're adding like so, so you can, can see like the fluffy texture on Mario's hat, and, like they're going those other things. I I think like I don't think that gets any more detailed at 4K. No. I um, maybe, maybe we laugh at this in a few years' time, but well, what what really cemented it for me is like if you go back to the Wii era, look how good Mario Galaxy looks, and it's not even in HD. True. Uh, that it, you just take that over, and it's like Mario Odyssey looks fantastic, but it doesn't need to be in 4K to look fantastic. Oh, definitely not. No. So, I mean, yeah, I think you upscale of it to 4K, and I, I mean, something. it would be better, but I think it'd be so marginal. Yeah, exactly. It would be like, yeah, it would, you would notice it. But um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, yeah, 4K is not an issue. It, it'll probably become more of a thing in the future, most likely. Uh, but I don't know. The way these resolutions keep getting bigger and bigger, and we're, we're going to get to the point where we're going to buy a TV and your, your eyes are just going to start bleeding. So. And then we just have to go through all this pain again, but when the, the screens are so tiny, they're so, in your, <laughs> your glasses, sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, we, we finally got back up to 4K. Uh, <laughs> tiny screen. <laughs> It won't be that far off because the uh, most VR units have separate, at least 1080 screens. That's right, yeah. We're almost there. Oh, we're almost there. Oh. <laughs> and another little bit of news. We had a new Nintendo Direct. How, do, how did we not have this on the top of the show? Connor? Well, because it, it doesn't really <laughs> apply to us. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> let me read one more. Yeah, sorry. We had a, a, it was a Japanese Nintendo Direct showcasing yeah. Dragon Quest XI for the 3DS. And the Switch, I assume. Uh, no, oh. I think it's just exclusively for the 3DS. <laughs> it's just, I, think, I think the 3DS version is actually coming up first. Um, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I mean, I watched it. Have you, have you seen it? Uh, the direct itself, I've not, though. No. Okay. Well, I mean, it's purely in Japanese, so I just skip through to like, the key points they make. Um, yeah, so Dragon Quest XI on 3DS is really interesting. Um, there's an option... In the game, I assumed it was like an option you pick up when you click a new game and it just says to you, Do you want to play a 2D game or a 3D game? No, you, in, in the actual game itself, you can switch between a 3D engine so you can play a game like Dragon Quest 8 on 3DS, yeah. or you can play it 2D with pixel art and all the bells and whistles okay. that come with it. So, is it saying which happens when you like continue a game, uh, or can you do it like on the it's floor? in the menu? You just go through the like, settings and it's like you can just switch it. Like what when you're paused, sort of thing. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming that's what I'm trying to work. I'm out. assuming when you're just like, like, do you have to reload your game, no, or is it like you? Can I don't. Like... See, I think it's just you go into like the menu and it's like you click it and then you go to like a low screen, and it just. Uh, but, then, but then you're right back to where you're you right were, back where you were, but in a different game engine. Oh, that's, which sounds awesome. Oh, that's cool. Man. But I also like mm. the tweaks they've done. So if you're playing it in 2D, which is like they could, I think they called it like old style. There's random battles. Playing 3D. Mm. There's not, because the enemies appear in the field. That's, that's such a different change. How, how, it's brilliant. That. It's great. I mean, it's like it's like, do you want to play Dragon Quest in the old style or the new style? Because they're very, you know, disparaging. Um, and, and the fact you can flip between the two modes makes that even more impressive. Yeah. So it could be. Oh, I don't want to grind for this bit. Well, it's it's almost like you get. I, I mean, you, see the monster, so I can dodge him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Flip over to the modern style is, for a it, bit. It's crazy because it's like you're getting. You get a game and you get like the remastered version, but in one game, mm. and it's the same game, but it's like you're getting two different versions of it, and it, it's like 
That's crazy. Yeah, that is actually quite a good way of looking at it. It is kind of like the free game is like the sort of treatment the 3DS would have given like that Ooh. game if it was an old 2D game originally. Dragon Quest Seven. Key yeah. point. That, that originally was a 2D game and the mm. 3DS is 3D. So yeah, it's like that, but in you're getting both versions. It's like that, but they also made seven <laughs> originally. Yeah, same time. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and yeah, you, you just choose which which way you want to see it. Um, I don't. Know, I think it's awesome. I was like, hey, it's really clever. Um, it is. They also kind of hinted at like the size of Dragon Quest Eleven okay. and some of the features. So Street Pass. Our old friend Street Pass, which no one yeah. really cares about anymore. Um, unless you're in Japan, of course. Unless you're in Japan, and yeah. that plays a huge part in this game. So it's essentially almost like DLC, which is free, but it's activated through Street Pass. So by having Street Pass on, mm -hmm. you walk around, and as you walk around, you're will pass certain, I'm guessing, certain key points in Japanese towns and cities. That every time you pass these points, you collect these little spiritual creatures. <clears throat> if you collect so many, you go to this labyrinth world, and you can go through these portals. Hmm. That takes you for what I, what I can't read Japanese, but for what I, appears to be a full, fully done world map of one of the old games. Ooh, all right. And, and I'm like, that's insane. That's almost it like is. that's almost like the you know, uh, Pokemon Silver and Gold, where you can go back to the back to Rainbow. Yeah, exactly. It's like that, but. There's been nine, I don't think they do the online one, but there's been nine Dragon Quest games before 11. Yeah. You know, it's like, so there's nine extra worlds you can visit. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know what you can do in these worlds. I, you know, I'm assuming there's like quests and stuff for you to do, but I was like, oh, that's insane. That this, this game is crazy huge. I think this is going to be the, the swan, swan song. Uh, I, I, at, I least, at least for Japan. On the 3ds, and yeah. I guess the American version of this is going to be um, Samus Returns. Yes, right. <laughs> if it yeah. has expectations, hopefully we will see. But um, I, I'm intrigued, though. It's like, so that's that, that they showcased they showcased all that for the 3ds version. Sure. So the Switch and PS4 version, like, can you visit the worlds in that one? It's like, how how are they going to integrate that into their version? That's Oh, I got a question. I mean, did they touch on the sort like? Would you still be able to flip graphical styles between these other, on these old maps? Oh no, that that I didn't show. I'm guessing so. My guess would be no. Yeah, I, I'm guessing certain maps. Like, I mean, maybe if you go to like Dragon Quest Seven or Eight World, it's in 3D. But I think seems like a lot of work. To... Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think the the old maps would be like pixel. Yeah, and maybe they'll that's they'll like name them as such, mm. like or like it's classic maps yeah. sort of thing, and it'll match up to the name of the style, like classic style sort of yeah. thing. You know, it's tied together. Yeah. Um, yeah. that's still, I mean, still impressive. Though. It's incredible, yeah. and I'm like, oh, that's a lot of work and that's a lot of effort. Mm. So yeah, I, I will be surprised if this is like the last mm. big Dragon Quest we'll see. So yeah, any other details, kind of? Capture interest, or it's very much as uh, I'm intrigued though about like the Switch version. It's like, yeah, you know, because like, obviously the, the the whole swapping graphical styles is not in the Switch version. No, because they they go for this really fancy like high quality, high fidelity, you know, anime style uh, yeah. graphical. Um, but I, I'm I'm very much intrigued if they are like the same game, you know, like, story wise. If it's actually the way they're doing it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued about uh, the whole thing. I, I might just get the three year version just to play in two D. I do like the old style Dragon Quest. Um, I think it's really cool that they're giving you this option. But you know, oh, a, a part of me feels like they're giving you this option because the three D. If you have the game running in three D on the old three DS, yeah. it might not run so well. <laughs> It depends, you know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they want it. it. It seems a weird thing, like, like knowing that there's already two, like, very different versions of this game. Mm. Why make the portable version this weird dynamic one where you can switch between an old and a new style? It's, right. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm appreciative of it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like you thought, like, oh, they'll lean into like, oh, let's cut, let's save some money here. We'll lean into the uh, the retro edge for the 3DS version. You get the classic spin. Yeah, exactly. For the console version, you get this new fancy, you know, high high fidelity version of it. Yep. But nah, they can fall out. <laughs> they don't ever. Oh, really I, I I I was actually worried that the 3DS version was going to be a bit of a cash in, really. Like, mm. yeah, because. The handheld versions are obviously huge in Japan. It's like, oh, it was let's, let's go throw the game onto the 3DS. It won't matter what it looks like. But no, they really are digging in deep to it. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And I really want to play it. So, yeah, looking forward to Dragon Quest 11. Looks awesome. Cool. And that actually does it for the news this week. Yeah. We had, we had some juicy bits, as we like. That was good. That, that was awesome. Yeah. Cool. So we've got the Harrison today. No. Um, so, um, you know what's coming next. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't have a proper intro for you yet. I, I need, to, need to have one ready when these times come. Right. And it can't be anything hands-related. It could be, some, could be legs <laughs> after our discussions today. Um, but would you like to... The bonus round, I can't think of uh, I support. will take us through the bonus round, yes. So, thank you. Bonus round time. So, I wasn't here last week, um, but these fine fellows asked, What DLC would you like to see in a Nintendo game? It's a good question, straightforward. I like it. <laughs> and if you don't mind me interrupting, go for it. Um, if anyone is listening live um, and hasn't answered yet and would like to, feel free to chuck your answers in. In time, we'll. Chuck them in before the uh, yeah, yeah. the end. Lewis will keep an eye on those. Cool. I shall do. I'll let you know of any pop-up. Brilliant. Sweet. All right. So as for the written recap answers we got. Sorry? I have a recap from the question now I've interrupted. Oh, uh, what? The bonus round question? Yeah. Uh, what DLC would you like to see in a Nintendo game? Cool. Mm. So... Uh, written answers we have Gentus at Gentus1 who says I want another round of Mario Kart 8 DLC Zero Suit Samus as a racer and one full cup uh, uh, one full cup as you race through Metroid 3 the Metroid theme tracks that uh, would be cool that would be cool um, uh, I wasn't never expecting a new character from Mario Kart especially new non- I wasn't expecting a new cat from a different series Taking us one step closer to the uh, Smash Cart. Yes. Yeah. You know, whatever. True. I mean, they have got yeah. zero carts in there, so I guess they can do all time. That's true. They've got F Zero tracks. I guess a Metroid track wouldn't be that far because we've got two no. F Zero tracks. I mean, F Zero obviously is a racing game, but they mm. don't make F Zero anymore. Nope. And we have got, they do make Metroids. We have Link as well as a playable character, so mm. it's not too far fetched, I guess. Yeah. Um, I feel if we saw Samus return, as it were, um, she would <laughs> she would be in her power armor, opposed to yes. just zero suit. Well, that's more iconic than zero suit, I think. Yeah, but, um, might be a bit too bulky though. I don't know. Charging, yeah, but especially on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So next up, Manic Embrace, uh, Bros of Death, who says, who, who follows on from what Jenta's saying is, don't forget about Metroid attacking you as you race. Maybe Mother Brain shooting at you from the sidelines. Again, yeah. If you have a Metroid theme. That's like a hop on arts, that is. That's an interesting take. Yeah. I mean, there, there will be great controversy, I'm sure, if I pick that one as the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, just piggybacking on Gentis. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, it's cool. I mean, they could do so much of a Metroid course. You know, Ridley, hmm. whatever, you know. But we will see if they actually do it. I mean, I don't think they will, but we'll see. I don't think it's out of the realms of possibility if they do do more non Mario y type tracks from the, the I just universe. I just don't think they're going to do Mario Kart Eight DLC as a whole. Well, well fair enough then. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah I, think, I think they're done but, that, really, but yeah, but I think if they were, like, I'm not saying just the the Metroid aspect. I don't think it's completely out of reach if they were going to, you know, do other Nintendo tracks. Because they're pushing Metroid pretty hard recently, so maybe. Uh, next up is Matthew Gibson at Ace Gibbo, who says Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, mainly geared, pun possibly intended, towards the battle mode. More new Mario Kart like EGAD would be cool too. Yeah, I mean, I can't, yeah, I can't forget about the battle mode. I mean, how many arenas are there in battle mode? 
Area eight, I believe. Or maybe that's, 10. That's, that's, that's quite a few. I was going to say, there's like three. And yeah, they've added a few more, but uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, more, yeah. Egad, I'm surprised he hasn't made an appearance. Right, sure, yeah, because obviously he could be a perfect. He's a marrying character. He's could drive you know, back and really also quite different. There's a lot of like quite semi characters in Mario Kart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all seven of the Cooper kids are there. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True, but they, wait, do they take up one slot or. or no, no, no they're, they're, all, they're all separate, aren't they? Oh, you're right. I'm thinking of Smash Bros. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> it should be done. Uh, next up is Factor at FAK yeah, FAKT 00R. I'm guessing it's pronounced Factor. Anyway, uh, he, he wants Arms DLC and a DLC with new 8 tracks from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There's a lot of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe yeah. stuff going here. Um, so he wants two new cups, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which, I mean, yeah, we said that's possible. I, I don't think they'll do it. Yeah, I, well, I think if we saw any new. Tracks they would come in at least two cups worth, yeah, just so they can have it like level, yeah. I think, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I think that's how it would happen. Um, but also, arms DLC, but of without being more specific, we know there's gonna be DLC coming, there's updates and stuff, yeah, yeah, we know it's free DLC coming at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next up is Anti Wickland at Aikland who says, Minish Cap style town and areas for Breath of the Wild. Link gets shrunk, shrunk down to extraordinary tiny adventure. Flying flowers, fly bugs, fight worms. <laughs> fight worms. Uh, that would be cool. I do love Minish Cap. Cool. I do love Minish Cap. Um, it would be inventive. And I, mm. I would like to see it in that art style. Yeah, and also, they, um, I remember there was l- at least some details coming out about the development that there was going to be like like a tiny village or something. Mm-hmm. And they scrapped the idea. Yeah. Um, it's something they could go back to. Maybe. But that would be a cool way to like, reuse that world. Mm. I, I, I was actually talking about this song while I was away. Um, it's like, oh, do you think they'll do more Zelda DLC after the the Battles of Champions? Oh, I, see, yeah. I was like, potentially. I mean, if, if the demand yeah. for it is there, I'm sure it will. But um, I'm pretty sure they might divert their focus on the next Zelda game. Yeah. And but to be fair, I mean, it could be an interesting way to to kind of keep people engaged between big Zelda releases because mm. they're not things which you can come out every other year, sort of thing. So no. if if they're going to be every three or four years, um, yeah, or longer, yeah, and you could have a team making DLC for the first game before the next one comes out. It's mm-hmm. not a terrible way of doing it. It'll keep people's interest. Yeah, mm. well worth it. All right, next up is Dave Saunders at David Off Donut. Great name. Uh, hope to see more stages and Pokemon in, in Pokken. Yeah, I mean, I did. they haven't announced the Pokken DLC. They have no. announced, like, one. They are adding characters to the deluxe version. Yeah, but they, they, they are part of the, yeah, the base package. The base package. Which game. I would be, yeah, I can definitely um, see him doing some DLC for it. That'd be cool. Um yeah, that's because there's quite a few Pokemon that make sense to be oh, to be in the yeah. fighting game that aren't there. Like you think, like Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee would be ideal. Yeah, but, <laughs> but they're not even in it. So it's like, uh, they don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, the original yeah. fighting duo. It, it was just they 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 were based on real fighting styles. I mean, Hitmonlee's what like Taekwondo and Hitmonchan's a boxer. So you think okay, they're pretty much pre-built. No one knows hit one Chan is Jackie Chan, hit one Lee is what Bruce Lee. Wait. There you go. Uh, all right, last up is Caponium at Caponium 13, who says, I would love to see I'd love to see some new battle stages for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And some DLC via Internet City for Mario... I was going to say Mario Party 4, that can't be right. Metro Prime 4 and Samus Returns. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, Mario Party 4 would be interesting <laughs> to the GameCube game and make DLC for it. Um, because of the absurdness, I would rather see the Mario Party 4 DLC than the Metroid <laughs> Prime 4 DLC. I mean, they did kind of do interconnectivity to uh, the first Metroid Prime and Fusion. Fusion, yes. You could get the Fusion suit in Prime. Yeah. And you could unlock, what, the, maybe the original Metroid in Fusion? 
I believe so. Has it been a game? It's been too long to say. Yeah, but there was something basically something unlocked in either. Yeah. In both when you connected them up, and that was the connectivity. Mm-hmm. They you, they were a key for each other. <laughs> uh, that'd be cool. I like to see that. But um, yeah, so Lewis. Yes. Since you are. There's yeah. no one else, no one else around. there were no live response, but we got quite a few regular responses anyway. Cool. Uh, is it Dragon Online? There's been some common themes with the Mario Kart mm. DLC. Um, is it tricky on the pick, really? I mean, I, I'd love to go for the Mario Party 4 one, but I'm not <laughs> sure that was what was intended. <laughs> um, that was just. Uh, it, it's going to be a repeat winner, unfortunately. Oh, but it's how how this game goes. Um, or or is it? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Um, I, I was pondering another one, but it, it's there's two similar ones anyway. So, um, Auntie Wickland, you are the winner. Um, with your Minish Cap style town. It's a cool image, and also thinking about it in a very odd way, like, would it count? Like, would you have to like multiply, like, by the numbers, as it were, the game worlds? If you were like calculating <laughs> the scale of it, would you? Th- would the game worlds then be like like ten times bigger, <laughs> even though you don't change it? Um, I can't see. Then both, so we've made the world ten times bigger. I I don't think they'll let you run around the world map as like a tiny little person. I think no, it would be get across. Exactly, yeah. Like, oh, I spent two days trying to get to <laughs> <laughs> four hours trying to climb mountains. Um, yeah, no, I think that'd be limited to like the village itself, but I, I would still love it. Really, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Well, I mean, as long as they give you the ability to go back and forth when you choose, so you can't, uh, yeah, you'll all be locked away. Screw yourself over. You, you can choose to attempt to climb mountains. The only thing is, in Minish Cap, you needed the actual Minish Cap to be able to shrink. Yes, yeah, we can bring the Minish Cap back in. They bring the Minish Cap back in, you go got like, actually equip it yourself. And, mm. It may not be the easiest way to... Well, I guess you probably wouldn't have to go you know, shrink and grow that often. So, yeah, you just equip no, the hat and you go small and equip it, you go back to normal size. Yeah, that sounds good. That works. Perfect. Yeah. That'd be cool. Cool. So, um, we don't have, I'm not saying this for many episodes, we are going to be changing up the format soon, but for the bonus round, if you're not aware, um, how this works is we ask you a question each week, uh, you guys answer, we pick our favourite, uh, the winner gets a couple of prizes, digital prizes, based off my Wii U game, Twisted Fusion. Um oh. The digital art book and the digital soundtrack. Um, these are these are going to become limited items very soon. <laughs> because if you weren't aware, basically um, the cutoff is going to be episode 100. Uh, probably actually, yes. probably episode 99. This I think this could be the last bonus round, Colin. How crazy is that? How well, crazy. I'm, I'm not, not committing to it, but at least the last one with a chance to win digital twisted fusion goodies. So, so get in while you can, folks, is what we're saying. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so the question we've got for you this week is what would be your dream Nintendo classic system and games? And, and so pick any of Nintendo systems you would like them to be re-released, um, whether it was in a mini version or whatever. Yeah. It could be, it could be it a could giant be. version of your dream. Um, <laughs> it could be a console, or portable, anything. Um, and let us know. You don't have to give us a full lineup. Um, but let us know what sort of games you'd be interested in. It could just be the one, like, what, like what's that one game you would love to replay on this system? Or if, you, if you've got a bunch in mind, let us know. We'll take them all into account. Um, you can send your answers to us in three many ways, I believe. Um, uh, so you can either tweet us at Nintendo Voice. You can send us an email, hello at NintendoVoice.com. Or if you're on YouTube, you can simply drop your answers into the comments uh, we will pick them up from those free sources. Um, and in the same way, we've not done a listener question round in a little while, but I would like to do one soon. Uh, so with those same, 
methods of contact. Do let us know just any Nintendo questions you've got. Questions for us, uh, and we can discuss them. Um, also, I will invite just general kind of future ideas. If it's a particular topic and it's not really a question that you'd like us to talk about, yeah, well, just just let us know. Just we'll, throw it away. Yeah, throw it away. Um, see what we do with it. And um, that does show. So before we do, uh, let's go around and just give out our contact details or anything we like to plug, uh, which isn't directly related. Or it could be directly related. Uh, Colin. Yes. How can the fine folks of the internet get hold of you? I mean, there's only one real way. For it on the way that... Well, I wasn't going to go to my home address. I'm not going to go to my home address. Um, I don't want to be bothered by people knocking on my door. Um, so, Twitter is what I was going to suggest. Um, my Twitter handle is at Highly Embarred, which is how you think it's spelled. It's, um, yeah. That's how you're gonna find me. Awesome. Uh, I have nothing to plug. Nothing to plug for you. Uh, I mean, I just got back from a holiday, a, a, week, a breakaway. So, you got a timeshare there. You go. You wanna? We yeah, don't know. I'm getting more things mixed up. Any? any <laughs> yeah. Any property in Scotland you want to rent out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that I know. Of. Not that you know. Of, fair enough. Uh, if if that situation changes, I'll. But I'll let you guys know. This is, this is where you plug it. Oh, absolutely. And um, I, I, I always, well, not always, I have often take this opportunity to plug things. Even even Harrison has yeah. taken advantage of the opportunity we bring <laughs> every week. <laughs> um, if you want to get hold of me, uh, at Luvian on Twitter is probably the best way. And I'm going to say the same thing I have for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and it probably the same central theme. Uh, we are having a slight change of format when we hit episode 100. We'll definitely have a big episode. It's going to be a fun episode. Well, we're going to refresh to this show. Keep things fresh, though. And so look forward to that. And I would also recommend still, if you've not done so, um, curious, do check out the video version if you are on the audio one, uh, youtube.com forward slash Nintendo Voice. Um, do check us out. Do give us a little subscribe, um, just so you can keep a fresh of what we're doing. Um, we may be chucking some extra bits up there as well. Um, maybe around 100 mark, maybe a bit later, we shall see. Uh, but do keep an eye out. Um, and that's it from... And equally, that is it for the show. And so, listening. thanks for everyone in the live chat hanging around. Thanks for people yeah. on the audio listening That's on awesome. their podcasting app. All very appreciated. And this has been Nintendo Voice. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>